This video was brought to you by my supporters on Patreon. Stick around to find out how you can help Artificer Industries and keep these videos rolling. Hey y'all, Zero here. This is Betty, and it's been a while since the last vid, but I'm back from vacation, I'm rested, and I'm ready to- You spent your whole vacation working. Again. Um, yeah, we don't really need to talk about that. I have photographic evidence. Shut up! You're not my supervisor! Anywho, where was I? Right. Tears of the Kingdom dropped during my downtime, and it's kind of consumed my soul. Around the same time, a fancy Zelda-themed Switch OLED also dropped, but I couldn't afford that. So true to my brand, I decided to make my own, at least the fancy dock part. Let's go. I kick things off with a basic sketch of my idea in Photoshop just to give me a place to start. Then I'll painstakingly take measurements of my own Switch, heights, lengths, widths, the spaces in between, and then remember, after I've spent half an hour doing that, that all consumer electronics have their details and measurements available freely online, thus rendering my hard work obsolete. So this build is just more artisanal? Yep, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Now this build will be mostly foam, but I still want a solid foundation, so I'm making a simple shell out of base wood. This will give me something to anchor all the decorative elements to, since gluing things directly to my switch is, at best, a bad idea. You'll notice that I've already glued the back foam plate on and textured it. It's not my usual pink foam either. This, my friends, is the good stuff. Oh yeah, the good stuff. Now, this is XPS foam, but it has a higher PSI than the pink or blue stuff you find at the hardware store, which means it takes detail even more beautifully. It's sold by Black Magic Craft, and I'll have a link to their store in the description below. Let's just get the Zonai Ouroboros on there. There we go. Now, like all XPS foam, drawing on it with a Sharpie or other indelible ink will etch the surface slightly. I go over those lines with my X-Acto blade in a shallow cut, no deeper than about an eighth of an inch, and I'll widen certain lines with a ballpoint pen. Then comes the real magic of this foam. You can make a relief carving just with a sharpened pencil. I'm compressing the upper layer of the foam as I shade, and the cut lines mean the rest of the foam stands proud. I'm able to create a 3D image on the foam without cutting away a single piece of it. After all that, I get this rad faux carved image. I told you this stuff was magical. For the rest of the main stone pieces, it's lather, rinse, and repeat. Texture the foam, cut off those perfect corners to give it some age, and add details like cracks, pockmarks, and sections where the surface of the stone broke off over the years. Each bit of detail you can add helps not only sell the illusion, but tell the overall story of the thing. For instance, in the game, Zonai ruins are remarkably well-preserved, but definitely not pristine. Sort of like internet content. <laughs> Topical humor for relatability to provoke engagement and please the YouTube algorithm gods. Got em. With the big parts done, it's time to start thinking about how I want to set up my lights. This piece will have two green LEDs running off two 3-volt coin batteries in this little battery pack, so the circuit's a simple one. But I also want a switch. No pun intended. Y'all know I love switches. And not only this one, Link Tunic Green, it reminded me of one of those Zonai devices you get in-game, so it's gotta go in. Honestly, this kind of random inclusion happens a lot. I get an idea in the middle of a build, and I find a way to make it work. When it comes to this stuff, trust your instincts. The first person that needs to be happy with your build is you. Now let's get the lid on this majestic temple. Just more foam and, uh, well, I'll sort it out. I used a piece of my other XPS foam and cut it down to size to give the lid something to grab onto the walls to prevent it from slipping when the entire assembly is closed. Now the last bit of XPS foam work beyond final carving will be using these bits ALWAYS KEEP THY BITS for debris. Those will go into this bottle filled with rocks for a gentle shake. Yeah, I, I think that's good enough for that. NAH! And now they're all textured and ready for breaking apart and placement. 
Tacky glue is my go-to for this. It's honestly just white glue, but it has a lower amount of water in it, so it dries faster and grips better while you wait. Let's just get the rest of this detritus on and boom. I also added some crumbled cork pieces for smaller stones and pebbles. But now it's time to play groundskeeper. The trees to either side of the temple get an armature of aluminum wire and foil that gets bulked up a bit more after they're glued into place. Then it's time to slap on some foam clay. Now, if you're unfamiliar with this stuff, I talk about it more on my Haunted Tree Dice Tower build, which I'll link right here. But long story short, this stuff is a lightweight air-dry clay that dries to the consistency of EVA foam. And it's great for projects like this where weight and mixed materials are an issue. I do a texture pass with one of my foil tools before using some of my other sculpting tools to put in all the gnarly lines and grooves of the bark. And once I'm all happy with how the trunks, limbs, and roots are looking, it's that time again. And while we wait for it to dry, I have a shop. This shop has things in it. Everyone likes things. These things are less cursed than other things, making them superior. It's a scientific fact. Link to my shop and things below. Please enjoy things. I have bills to pay. Time to seal this in black paint and Mod Podge so I can get on with the painting. See, was that so hard to seal it? I didn't even need a master sword. The Zoli stonework gets a base coat of a slightly green mid-tone gray, and I follow that up with a brighter version using a sponge brush to work in some of the natural variation and patterning across the stone. To get the golden lichen look, and to set up areas where some blocking will go on later, I use a corner cut off of a cheap dish sponge to dot this darker mustard color wherever the plant growth would naturally collect. Now you might think that the framing moving on this shot is a clever editing trick. It's not. It's just my cheap camera arm deciding to nope out in three, two, one. Once that catastrophe is taken care of, I hit the trees with a light warm gray. The Sky Island trees, and I still call it Sky Rule, please clap, remind me a lot of squat aspens, so I paint them with that in mind. Then, just like the stone, they'll get a pass for the lichen, and it's on to wash. I'm using a burnt umber acrylic ink here to dull down the brightness a bit and to get a good layer of dirt and grime into all the details of the stone and trees. I wipe off the majority of the ink off the highest points with some paper towel, and yep, it's that time again. Now overall, I'll bring back selective parts of this piece by repainting certain areas and then a dry brushing of a bright warm gray over everything, but mostly focused on the points of interest like the wall carving. This is a great trick for drawing the viewer's gaze to specific parts of a build, and it's useful for everything from terrain to minis to props. And the paint job is done! And now we are on to everyone's all-time forever favorite segment. We will, we will flock you. We'll get this show going with some tacky glue and this burnt fine turf from Woodland Scenics for our lichen. Followed by these tufts of golden grass that I tacked down with super glue. If you don't have a foam safe super glue, making sure your foam is completely sealed is super important. As regular cyanoacrylate, aka super glue, will melt through your foam faster than gloom tears through your hearts down in the depths. I also have this new addition to the lab, these miniature fall leaves, and these will be a lovely touch to really sell the model. Now, while I get these on and start to punch in the foliage on the trees, I want to thank my supporters on Patreon, including my newest supporters, Phoenix Ash, The Painting Pirate, of Dyson Minis, Diana Wu, and Seth Easterling Babin. These videos and builds are 100% funded and made possible by my Patreon supporters, so thank you all so, so much for letting me share my geekery and crafting with you. If you would like to join the Lab Goblins, you'll find a link to my Patreon below. But with the flocking done, the lights working, and the switch sitting comfortably inside, there's nothing left for me to do but show you some glamour shots.
and tell you a little bit of story. Archaeology is a funny thing, even in Hyrule. No matter what you find from the distant past, it will always be viewed and understood through the lens of the present. Some say that means there's bias, and maybe they're right. But it's also a strength. As we understand the Zonai, we understand ourselves and our possible future. Because you can't know where you're going if you don't recognize where you started. And you can't build the future without a little help from the past. 